This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 547 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is brought to you by Equestrian Collections. Hi, Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is from me, Coach Jen, and my good buddy from the Stable Scoop show, Helena B. We'll be getting together every so often to chat about those nifty little tips that pop into our heads at odd times and then just smolder right there in the back of your mind, causing focus deficits during working hours. Today's random tips are on taking care of your horse's clothes. But first, a word from our sponsor, EquestrianCollections.com. The equestrian's favorite trinity of fourth quarter shopping opportunities is upon us. Winter weather winter show circuits, and winter gift giving. No worries. Just surf on over to equestriancollections.com. There you'll find an astounding array of name brand blankets and outerwear for winter weather, splendid show clothes for winter circuits, and innumerable goodies for gift giving. Equestriancollections.com. Bring the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Now, enjoy today's tip. And Helena B., and Coach Jen are here together to do yet another random tiplet. Or this is more of a group of random tiplets because it's I really like weird. I like that word, tiplet. Yeah. I like making up our own words. Yeah, it's a tiplet. You know, one of my other favorite words is buzzle. Ooh, what's a buzzle? I don't know. I have to put something behind it, but I just like the word. Buzzle. <laughs> so if there's something that you buzzle, it's like, it's like I don't know. Buzzle don't is know. good. If you're listening out there and you can come up with a definition for buzzle, Let's hear it. Post it on our Facebook page or send me an email at helena at horseradionetwork.com. I want to hear what you think the word buzzle should mean. How's Ooh. that for a tangent? Can you say Buzz- ATD? Just, that just rolls off the tongue of buzzle. That could have so many meetings. That's <laughs> fabulous. All right. So tiplets today tiplets. Tiplets is what today. you find on the Horse Radio Network shows that Coach Jen and Helena B are going to talk about. Tiplets. That's right. Here we go. And we're doing what? Blankets? Today, it's, there are blanket tiplets. Um, one of the things that many, many, many horse caretakers and horse owners deal with is once you start blanketing in the winter, what do you do with the blankets when the horses aren't wearing them? What? Okay. Okay. You, you, you're using them. You can't very well put them back in the trunk because you're going to put them back on four hours or something. Right. Um, you hang them on the door. You hang them on a piece of, piece of bale or twine. You buy exceedingly expensive, um, racks, things like that. But what tends to happen, especially with a turnout blanket, is they get kind of, they, they develop that armpit odor problem because they spend all of their time either on a horse who is either sweaty or dirty or both or rolled up in a ball and being slept on by a kitty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yeah. hopefully not peed on by that kitty. By a kitty. Or in the case of some barns, being perched on by various and sundry foul. Um, And one of the solutions we found worked so well for us many years ago when Glenn and I had our own farm um, was to hang them up by the chest um, buckles. In other words, you just hang it up. So it hangs completely straight. It's not folded at all so that the air can circulate through a little bit, which is a fabulous way to hang up your blankets. But when we looked at the price of putting up 25 or 30 of those um, purchased from a store, we went, ooh, that's a little prohibitive because they're not cheap. They make a bar for that that has to be very sturdy because a blanket is heavy when it hangs like that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, hmm, Not going to work so good. So Uber Hubby Glenn, the geek of Horse Radio Network fame, came up with this solution. You take a two-by-four. And you get yourself about an 18 to 24-inch section of it. We used 18s. And you buy yourself an inexpensive T-hinge from the hardware store. A T-hinge is the one that the portion that screws to the door, or in this case 2 by 4 is triangular in shape. And the piece that attaches to the wall is rectangular. 
Okay, so just Google T hinge because I just T-hinge. did it. And yes, you can right see up. them. It's everywhere. They're on yeah. doors. They're door couple, hinges. Couple dollars. Yes. And get the one that is big enough that the two by four um where you attach the two by four, it's it's as wide as the two by four. Get the biggest one that will fit on your two by four. Because okay. you need something sturdy. Mm-hmm. Don't get the cutesy one with the black powder coating. Oh. Get the galvanized one. Okay. The cutesy one with the black powder coating is not made of the same metal. It will not hold up. It'll bend. A uh, voice of experience right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tried this. Like, oh, that's not working. I know. And then yeah, just, I, I've learned you got to go heavy duty from the beginning. Yeah. Don't, don't go for fancy. Just go for heavy duty. Go for heavy duty. If you want to get clever, you can paint the two by four. You know. And then hang it at an appropriate height on a nice sturdy wall. Do not use nails. Use either... Uh, bolts, if you have to bolt through it with a nut on the other end, or a good heavy-duty screw, preferably with a washer, too. Okay, so the hinge here gets attached to the wall? The, the rectangular part goes on the wall. Yes, okay. And the triangle and the, part goes on the 2x4. On the 2x4, okay. And which orientation does it go vertically, up and down, or left to right? Well, it goes left and right because it swings like a little door. And what works out really well here is you hang it up, you close the chest buckles on the blanket, you hang that ch- those chest buckles over the little bar, and when you're finished, you push them all flat so they are still hanging, but you can push them out of the way. They're not sticking straight out of the wall all the time. You pull it out, you hang it up, you push it back. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now, and have what you was, done this in your barn? I have. I, we did this in our barn when we lived in Pennsylvania. It was wonderful. And then to add insult to injury, because we had a lot of, you know, how it is with, with blankets. They all pretty much come in two colors. Yes. Um, so you get mixed up whose is whose is, and you label the blanket. But what we also did was we labeled the racks. Oh, I love that idea. So that when Georgina came into the barn and needed to find um, Thunder's blanket, when they're hanging, it's hard to find the tag that's on them, because usually the tag is on the chest part. If, you know, well, okay, right there it says thunder on the end of that thingy. Right there is thunders, and I can find it more easily. So we labeled them that way, but it was just, and you can hang them in groups, you know, in that they're all lined up together down, you know, a certain aisle way or a certain area of the barn. Mm-hmm. Um, some stables, the way they're set up, it works well to put, um, like, two of them at each stall because each horse's blankets hang next to his stall or whatever. But it was a very efficient and very cost-effective way to hang up blankets when they were not in use and keep them as fresh as you can, considering they're hanging around on a horse that rolls in poop on a regular basis. So how would this be, what's the benefit of this method of hanging them versus a blanket bar attached to the stall door? <clears throat> when you put them on a blanket bar, you have to fold them. Yeah, okay, so that makes them stinkier. and, and It seals in the, um, the dampness it. and organic matter that uh, just want to harvest. Yeah, yeah, you get the point there. It's kind of like, call, you call it organic matter, I call it ick. It's ick, exactly. It's it's buzzle. It's buzzle. <laughs> <laughs> it could it's be kind, buzzle. It's it's kind of like you know dirty sweaty socks. If you pull them off your feet and they roll up in a ball and put them in the in the laundry basket, eh. yeah, that's yeah. the worst husband trick. Yeah. So so, uh, you know. so this actually lets them air out, keeps them out of the way, is affordable, and you, and skill wise, you know how they they say like. Easy, medium, difficult. Yes. <laughs> that sounds pretty In the easy. recipe book. <laughs> you, just easy. Need to know, you just need to, to use, to know what materials you have. So you yes. want a good solid two by four. And, you know, I, one of the things that I'm going to suggest in the wood that you choose for this is if you can, if you have some polyurethane or any kind of sealant, it's a good idea to slap some of that on your wood um, because the blankets are wet mm-hmm. and the moisture will transfer into the wood. So if you want it to last as long as it can, just seal it up. Seal it up. Paint it with a good, uh, a good outdoor paint if you love colors like at the barn where Beaker lives. They would be painted pink, I'm sure. Yeah, they would be painted pink. And they have um, – one of the things that we used in our barn is deck stain. <gasps> awesome stuff. That is the most sturdy, wonderful product ever to go on a paintbrush. So it comes with more options because, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's really for residential use, but it's sturdy outdoor stuff. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, go to the deck stain and paint section. Yes, deck stain and paint. Um, having grown up in a very, very old home with wooden floors, most of the floors were painted with ty- this type of product. And they do come in a, lo- of a lovely variety of colors, yeah. the deck ca- paints. Yeah, yes, they do. That's they a good do. idea. Deck paint, another friend at the barn. Another- <laughs> <laughs> so this is the T-Hinge solution for hanging 
blankets. You betcha. When they're, when they're not in use. Yeah. Um, so that tiplet number one. Tiplet number two. Um, and this, this one sprouted after we had a chit-chat with the folks at Fred's to the Rescue blank, Horse Blanket Cleaning and Repairing Company. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a local outfit here in Kentucky, and we chit-chatted with them one day on, I guess it was Horses in the Morning, about cleaning blankets, how it happens, yada, yada, yada. So if you go to search for Fred's to the Rescue, you'll find that interview on Horses in the Morning. Um, but what do you do between launderings? You can't... It's just like clothing. The more you launder it, the faster it wears out, especially a turnout blanket. They Laundering and turnouts, you know, you don't want to do it too often. But yes. they get scuzzy, right? Get yes, scuzzy. yes. Well, vacuum them. It's a rug, isn't it? It is a rug. Well, you're talking to the wrong person here if you want <laughs> a, 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 an objective opinion about vacuuming things in the barn. <laughs> As we all know by now that I do have a little OCD. I, I don't want to. I do. I ha, I do. I have OCD. I do keep a vacuum cleaner in my barn. When we bought, and this is a good tip for those of you who are less anal retentive than me. Um, oh, extra you, tip, little alert. This is a bonus tip. Extra, <laughs> extra tip, little alert. When you upgrade your indoor, your home vacuum cleaner, don't just trash your old one. You know, if it doesn't work as well, retire it to your barn. Um, it's really great for getting dust, you know, like, especially if you use shavings, it's great for getting dust out of those crevices and and cricky places. Um, and for vacuuming your blankets. Mm. (laughs) Now I wouldn't recommend an upright for this. No, 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 no. (laughs) No. I abandoned the uprights long ago. They're just too heavy and difficult to use. We've moved to canisters and I have to suggest the Sears Kenmore canister vacuum cleaner because... Long ago, when I was working and didn't have kids and two horses to take care of, I had a little extra cash, and we had a cleaning lady. And she obviously cleaned a lot of houses, and she said that the Sears Canmore canister clean, vacuum cleaner was by far the best vacuum cleaner for its price range. She said it just lasted forever. It did a great job. And ever since then, we've been buying you know Sears Kenmore's. And we get one, like, I don't know, every five years or so. Mm-hmm. Do we need to get one every five years? No, but again, there's that OCD. Mm-hmm. So yeah. anyway. If, if it can't suck up a spider from 20 yards, it's not good enough, is it? No. <laughs> no, I know. I can't yeah. even. I can't, you know what, though? I, don't, I can't suck up spiders anymore. I can't do it. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel really bad. Well, here's the scoop. I suck up enough for both of us. Okay, that's fine. So it all, it all evens out. All right, so where were we? What were we talking about? Vacuuming yeah. horse blankets. See, when the horse blankets, um, and you, it's, you flip, up, flip them over to the inside, you see the, um, that kind of a gray shiny, which is the, the coat oil in there. It doesn't yeah. look dirty. But just like your carpet, there is a lot of dander in there that you don't see. So vacuum the inside. And when it's dry, vacuum the outside as well. But it's just as important to vacuum the inside. I mean, you're changing your sheets for your horse. So turn the little rascal inside out. And if you use the T-hinge hanger, you can do it while they're hanging up. Just whip out the old shop vac or the retired home vac that you keep at your barn. And give it a quick once over every week or so. And it will help those blankets stay cleaner. It'll help your horse stay cleaner. And uh, it's a really great way to extend the freshness level of your horse's blankets. Yeah, and it saves you money, too, because then you don't have to launder them as much. Because really, I, I'm, I don't ever, I don't get overly concerned about the crud on the outside of the horse's blanket, but I do get concerned about the health of their skin because of that buildup of crud underneath it. The inside crud, yeah, right. The, the and you know what amazed me when we talked to Fred's to the rescue? And I knew this previously, but it still amazes me. Um, I don't know about laundering services around the rest of the world. But uh, you pay, what, between 100 and $200 on average for a turnout blanket here in the United States? You think that's probably a good average? Yes. They charge $11.50 to clean your horse's blanket. Really? I mean, you can't do that at the laundromat. <laughs> what do you mean? Now, I don't know. Is that a lot? Would you think? No, my gosh, that's cheap. When you go to the laundromat, and if you can sneak in when there's nobody around because they don't like you washing your horse's blankets in the laundromat machines, um, 
you're going to pay at least $6 here in Kentucky to use the machine once. And if you've got your average dirty turnout blanket, you need to run it through at least twice. Holy cow, $6 to do a load of laundry? Well, you can only put one turnout blanket in at a time. But even if you were just washing underwear. Yeah, exactly. That's what it costs in a laundromat these days? Well, the, the top loaders are a little bit less. They'll be you know, like $4 Still, in Kentucky. Yeah. Holy cow. I, it's been a long time since I've had to go to a laundromat. Obviously. <laughs> I used to, well, we used to have to do it, and oh, my gosh, I hated it. I mean, the laundry would build up, uh, but uh, wow. That's what amazed me. And the nice part is, um, like some other, I have spoken to other laundering services um, and the laundering service will develop water temperature parameters and soap parameters specifically for the turnout blankets because heat and soap are the enemy of waterproofing. Indeed, indeed. And, and if they're not just right, you will take your $265 Rambo blanket and in a heartbeat make it not waterproof if you mm. don't do it properly. And I looked at the price. I'm going, if you're paying even $15, hello. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I am the fan. I'm a fan of having your blankets professionally laundered. Do you guys have a, a, a professional laundering service up there where you are? We do. We do. Um, when I was way up north, north of Boston, there were there were several, and um, you know, part of the reason why I used the service was whatever barn I was boarding in had it, and you know, mm-hmm. it's just convenient. Um, where I am now, there's it's it's a woman. And this is her her business, but what she does is she um, because it's just her. She takes the blankets and whatever brand they are, and she knows what each blanket requires in terms right. of longevity. Exactly. But yeah. she also will um, she'll make recommendations on how to store it when it's in use. Wh- you know what's good for this blanket, what's not good for that blanket. Mm-hmm. She, she obviously offers um, you know rewaterproofing. Mm-hmm. Things, uh, reward proofing options, but she'll also stitch up any holes. Yeah. She'll tell you where the. Have a, it's kind of like you should have a good relationship with your butcher yeah. and your blanket cleaner. It, it, it's it's yeah. one of those things that you don't think is really important until you do it once or twice and you say, wow, you know, that really saved me. It, it just made it so much easier to use my blankets over the winter. Well, what and what's so nice too is. You take them in, and, and around here, because we have so many horses, we have, I think, somewhere to the tune of 30,000 horses within a one hour's drive of my house. Mm. And a good percentage of them do wear blankets at some point during the year. Um, they will actually come and pick them up and deliver them for you because there are so many. Um, so if you get the whole barn together, you just put them in a heap, and everybody put a tag on your blanket, and then two weeks later, they all show up and they're like new. It's I wonderful. Know. It is. They are, they are like new, and it's, it's <laughs> they're all fresh and neatly folded in a little sack. It's wonderful. <laughs> so anyway, the the tip being, you know, vacuum them in between. And here we are talking about getting them cleaned, but vacuum them in between because that really does um, improve the chances of your horse's coat and skin staying healthy between launderings, and it will also extend the longevity of your blankets as a whole. So. Yeah, and it takes two minutes to do. You can use a shop vac or zing, you can use a retired house vac. Yes. Yep, um, you got it. So right. that's tiplet number two. Tiplet. And we have one last tiplet okay. on today's random tiplet session. Um, not everybody has the ability to have um, racks specifically designed for holding blankets to dry. Um, it's just the real world, and some people don't have that option. I remember many, many years hanging wet blankets over cross ties. Just close the cross ties in the middle and hang the blankets over top. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but very limited because the air circulation is only on the exterior. The inside, it's hanging over a line. Mm-hmm. I just discovered this one last week, and I'm going, wow, where was I all my life? I threw Beaker's blanket over a string that I had pulled across the aisleway of my grooming area. I'm like, okay, only the outside is going to get dry here. So I took my saddle rack. I have a foldable saddle rack. Mm-hmm. And I parked it underneath so the foldable saddle rack was inside and it held the sides like a little pup tent. Mm. So that the air got inside and outside. It was wonderful. And then I thought, well, you could do the same thing. Just take a, a, a stick, yeah. stuff it in there. So you create a pup tent effect in the middle so that you get air on the inside and the outside. Because in the winter when it's cold, it takes a long time for these things to dry. It does. It does. Um, you know, so you can maximize the airflow. That's even better. 
there, there's a, this is, now this is a variation on that theme. Um, what I did was uh, where I have my cross ties in my aisle way, there is a, a beam that goes across the top of my, the aisle. Now this is, this only works if you have this, this beam and it could be in your tack room. It could be, um, you know, in your aisle way. But what I've actually done is I've hung harness hooks uh, at the top there. Mm -hmm. They're okay. So they're about seven feet high or eight, whatever, 10 feet is my, my ceiling. Um, and there's one, two, three, four, four of them, five of them. This is a good way to get airflow through several blankets at a time. So what I do is I fasten the, um, the buckles, the chest buckles, mm -hmm. and I, I hang up the really wet blankets there. So it allows all the water to drip down. Good, 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 good. Now, obviously, you, you know, this is taking up some barn space. But what this allows me to do is they hang up, they drip down, I let the outsides dry or get fairly dry, and then all I have to do is literally flip the neck. Oh, grab it at the withers and give it a tug, and it flips itself inside out. And it flips itself yeah. inside out, and, you're, and you don't even have to unhook the buckles. Yeah. So it basically just it flips itself inside out, and, and therefore the air gets to the other side. So, so your, your harness hooks where you hang them are in the center. They're not against the wall. No, they go across the aisleway. So, see, know. this is the smart part is that when you put them on the wall, the blanket will be hanging up against the wall, really limiting things. But by hanging them basically down the center of the aisle or across the center of the aisle, you've really maximized the uh, surface area exposed to that air. That's a, a see, we got two tips in one right there. You got two tips in one. And the good thing is now, the, what makes this particular configuration really work is if your barn is set up to capture the breezes. So, my barn doors capture, uh, we have a westerly breeze. And when we, when, and I think most. That's because you live at the beach. No, 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 no. There is a natural breeze <laughs> in most barns. And I, to be honest with you, if you're, if you're in a really old barn, your doors are probably oriented yeah. to capture yep. that, that breeze. Yeah. Any, any barn built before 1950 That's is right. going to be pretty much oriented. That's awesome though. You, you slide open the barn doors on a nice day yes. and mother nature sweeps it for you. Exactly. So, uh, so my, and so when my blankets are really, really wet, um, especially my turnout sheets, my waterproof turnout sheets, they dry so fast. That's so. a great idea. Put yeah. the hooks in the center. So yet another option, we have T hinges to hang up blankets, mm -hmm. um, the convenient and get them out of the way to let them air. If you really need to maximize drying, you can put those hooks right smack in the middle of the aisle. And if you're, and they're high um, enough out of the way. So right. they don't and if you're sleep. vertically challenged, Get this. If you're vertically challenged, um, use a tack cleaning hook, put a screw eye in the ceiling, a string across the top, and you can use it like a pulley, drop <laughs> it down, hang it up, and pulley it back up if you're for vertically challenged folks. That's a good, I actually keep a step stool in the barn with a little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a little hole in the top, like the handle inside, mm -hmm. you know, in the van, because I, I like to hang my hay nets up high enough, you know, at eye level for my horses, so... I, I do keep a step stool anyway, and it, it's actually extremely handy. So uh, yeah. you can either add that to the list method. Of, yeah, on that. So you need a hair dryer in the barn, you need duct tape, and you need a step stool. Okay, got it. Exactly, yes. Boy, we have so many tips in one day. It's, it's just astounding. So those were the three, right, so those were the three blanket tiplets, the T-hinge, the vacuuming, and the hang-to-dry on a line, place saddle rack, pup tent, sweat scraper, Harness hooks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sweat scraper worked great. Use a harness hook or a, or a um, tack cleaning hook in the ceiling if you really want to hang them in the, in the middle because that's what yeah. your option is. Yeah. Um, awesome possum once again. And uh, we're going to run and let our listeners get on with their lovely day. Hopefully they're going to go out and ride the pony. And that was just so much fun. To listen to all of my tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the experts drop down menu on the left. You can also stop by the Horses in the Morning show at horsesinthemorning.com where I am mostly behind the scenes taking listener calls and making an occasional snarky comment to help keep Glenn and Jamie on track. Helena B. can be found every week over on the Stable Scoop show providing insightful commentary and delightful suggestions to the horse world. Just surf on over to stablescoop.com to listen to the show. Please stop by the Horse Tip Daily Facebook page and let us know what you think of the tips you hear on the show. It's also a great place to tell us about topics you'd like to hear us cover. 
You can subscribe to all of the great shows on the Horse Radio Network through iTunes or Zune and get your horse podcasts automatically downloaded to your iPod, Zune, or MP3 player. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, go ride your horse! The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily.